Hey, here we go with another one. The steps to purchase an off-plan property. So this is the purchase or the process for buying a property from a developer. In another video, we covered resale property, secondary market. This is a primary market, and this is straight from the developers. So let's make this screen big and hop right into it. You found a project by a reputable developer with a history of delivering projects on time. You want it, so what's the next step? Step one, unit selection and agreement of terms and conditions. Generally, if there is little to no flexibility in developer pricing. Some developers may be slightly flexible in the payment plans or include or discount a furniture package. Make sure you understand the position of the desired unit and the project and what facilitates slash features immediately surround it. Ensure all parties understand and agree the major terms and conditions of the transaction, such as the purchase price. Another point is reservation deposit value that will remove the property from the open market. Does this sound familiar, guys? Will the buyer conduct a due diligence? If so, will the reservation deposit be refundable subject to which terms and conditions? What is included in the purchase price? Any furniture or fittings? The next one is tax and transfer fees. What is the buyer responsible for? And what is the developer responsible for? Another point is what is the payment schedule for upcoming payments? This is important, guys. What's your payment schedule? When do you need to pay? How much you need to pay? Is it monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annually? Next point is what is the projected completion date for the project and what penalties are in place if the developer is late? If the developer is slow with it, then how do we recruit funds for the money we already put down into the project? And so that will be detailed and outlined and that's a part of your due diligence too. So we have the tax and transfer fees. And if you look over and you pause the screen, this section, looks very familiar with the last one, and it is. The tax withholding tax explained, right? Withholding tax explained in the same chart. So you can pause this video and examine this yourself, or you can go back and revert to the resale, the resale process, but it's the same information, okay? Now, developer due diligence. Let's go over here and see what it is over here. This is different. The developer due diligence is different. So let's go through this. Buying a property directly from the developer doesn't necessarily mean that you should skip the legal due process. So you still need to do due diligence. And there is certainly less risk if the developer is a publicly listed company with a history of completing and delivering projects on time. Reference developers' profiles on fw.com, fossilwatch.com to find out this information other areas where a legal due diligence can add additional safeguards. So here on Fossil Watts, they have the profile of developers. So you can check and see if they delivered before. This is great. Great source. This is why I'm talking about this website. It's a great website, guys. It's one of the best. It is the best in Thailand. And title search. Here we go. Title search. A lawyer will be able to conduct a physical inspection of the land and the title to Assert if the boundaries are clear and in accordance to the deed. Does the project observe the relevant zoning restrictions? And are there any issues like connection roads and land plots that would impact physically assessing the development once completed? Next one is permits. Any new project requires approval from the government. These vary depending on the size and type, condo slash houses of the project. Has the project been issued a construction permit and does it reflect the accurate plans of the project? Has an initial, initial environment examination, IEE, been completed? A yes or no answer to these questions doesn't necessarily make the project more or less investable. Investable, excuse me. However, it will impact the overall timeline and the likelihood that the project will progress as scheduled. More or less risk should be reflected in the overall value offering depending on what point and building cycle you are investing. Here goes the next one, the developer's credentials. Developer credentials. 
A due diligence can reveal if the developer has been involved in any court cases or declared bankruptcy. It can also reveal if the developer is new to building in Thailand and if this is the first project for them. Guys, that's a big difference. So a lot of people might tell you on a project that, hey, this project developer has built projects all across China. They have built projects all across America or the UK. Well, that's not Thailand. And so you got to remember here in Thailand, they're going to need certain political context. They're going to need connections with the government. And so it might not be as easy as their projects or it might be completely different, harder or whatever, but it's different. Contract review. Having a lawyer review the sales and purchase agreement can ensure that the document is weighed equally between the buyer and seller. Are the construction payments linked to build milestone versus calendar months, right? So are you just paying on a calendar month based off of just the calendar month? Or is the milestone of the building where you also pay? So it's connected, meaning there's a calendar and they have to deliver. They have to deliver the foundation before they receive more than the 10th payment. If they don't, if they haven't poured the foundation, then they don't get more than the tenth or the fifth payment. And so that's important. What contractual assurances are there for renewal of registered leases? What voting rights do you have in the project? And what liabilities and warranties does the developer have? So check out what they have as far as warranties and liabilities. This is what we talked about. Getting an agent. Getting a representative, a legal lawyer that specializes in real estate. Access to capital. What funding does the developer have in place to complete the project? Is the project backed with financing from the bank or will the fate of the project be in the hands of the success of the sales cycle? So did the developer get funding from a bank or did the developer just raise funds from all the sold units? And you have to be very careful because some of the units cannot be sold at this point. And so that's very risky, right? And guys, remember with the lawyer, get a lawyer from the area. If you're buying in a development project in Patia, don't have a legal team and a legal agent from Phuket, right? Make sure that they're in that same area too. Let's go back. Prior research, uh, prior research to the points above can make a difference between a good and a poor investment or a choice. To assist in determining if a due diligence is required, ask yourself, how experienced are you in reviewing contracts and investing in Thailand real estate? And how many projects has the developer developed on time in the past? Guys, I'm experienced and I still get a lawyer. I'm experienced and I still get a lawyer. So get a lawyer. All right. We went back after the developer's due diligence, which was different from the other due diligence. And we're back at reservation agreement on the initial steps uh, to purchase an off plan property. And so step two, this document, excuse me, just give me two seconds. Let me just reduce this. Okay. This document is provided by the developer and outlines the general purpose of purchase terms and timelines agreed above that are associated with your investment or your purchase. Step number three, reservation deposit. A deposit of approximately 2% of the purchase price, which is different from five to 10 on the resale property, right? So on the development project, a deposit of approximately 2% of the purchase price varies from developer to develop and market to market. We'll secure the unit of interest, removing it from the open market. Some deposits are refundable subject to the legal due diligence. Ensure that you work with the developer to obtain a payment slip for the transfer. Guides again. And then also, here you go, obtaining a FET, and then as the same rules. Remember the FET or the TT3. That's that same process. You can go back to that video. I'm going to show you it again so you can pause the screen and read it if you need be. So I'm going to bring it up on the big screen. There you go. Three, two, one. And if you want to just stop the video and read that, you can read that. It's the same. And remember, reservation agreement first before any deposit money. Let's move down to the next one. Step four, sales and purchase agreement. Typically, you will have 30 days to review the terms and conditions of the sale and purchase agreement, which contractually outlines the complete overview 
of the project and details of the unit you are purchasing. Now we got step five, the first contract payment. This payment can range anywhere between 20 to 40% of the purchase price for non-residents of Thailand. The funds must be transferred into the country from an overseas bank account. Now, step number six, payment and installments, right? Layaway. We got layaway on property, property on layaway. Step six, let's bring it up to the bigger screen so you guys can see it if you're watching. Depending on where the project is in the building cycle, next your next payment will be linked to milestones in the construction progress. Rough dates can be provided by the developer, but a payment should be linked to completion of critical advancement in the project. Again, payment must come from overseas. Part number seven, step number seven, snag list. Two to three weeks prior to handover, a snag list will be created to correct any deficient uh, deficiency in the property prior to handover. Any issues with the property, it'll have a turnover period. And step eight, transfer. When the building is finished, the developer will serve a notice to complete, and then you'll pay the rest of the purchase amount, and the property is yours. You are not required to be in Thailand to complete the handover process. This could be executed by a third party on your behalf. Remember, get those lawyers, guys, okay? And then CAM fees, we go to the CAM, and again, the same is similar as the last, right? Maintenance fees and et cetera. Now that we've covered, now that we've got the basics covered, time to narrow down the best market in Thailand for you. And then the next video will be about Thailand location overview and what market is right for you. So once again, thanks for joining on this video. This video was about the steps to purchase an off-plan property. An off-plan property is different from a resale property. And if you want to read into the details of what the CAM is and what the taxes and transfer fees are, those are in different videos. And some of the CAM information is on the process of purchasing resale property. So I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, we are all we got. And thank you for watching Real Escape Thailand.